doing. Jesus is laying his life down for the sake of others. So John, he's going to do this. He's going to transition to chapter 3 and say this. Here's how we know what love is. Look at what God did. Love does not define God. God defines what love is. So the way you and I know what love is, we look to God and then we say, this is what God has done in Christ. And now our definition of love has been written. Look at what God has done in sending his son who lays his life down for us. And so this is what God calls us to is, I want you to lay your life down for one another. Do whatever is life giving for other people. If you need to use the five love languages to figure out how to do something that's life giving to people, well then you do it. If it's acts of service, serve. If it's words of affirmation, affirm. If it is whatever it is, do something that is life giving for the other person. That's what a life of love looks like. So John's going to transition and he goes to chapter four and says, this love, this life of love, this is what's happening. God, who is love, is constantly pouring his love out into your life and into my life. There is a movement of love always happening from God because that's who he is. Now, what you and I have the choice to do is this. We are recipients of God's love. We are his dearly beloved children. We're the kind of people who, as Brendan Manning said, we are people who have, yes, we've been seized by the power of a great affection. We've been taken hold of by this incredible power of love from God. And when you and I, when our hearts and our minds understand what God is doing when he takes hold of us, what God's hope is this, let my love flow through you. Because your choice and my choice is this, we can be a dam or we can be a channel. And so that sermon two weeks ago, some of you remember the sermon was this, don't be a dam, be a channel. Because what we can do is this, God's love's coming to us. It's always flowing to us. But we can prevent the flow of God's love, and we can say, I'm going to stop that love from going anywhere else. And God is saying, don't be a damn. You be a channel that is deep and wide, so that my love can flow in you and through you in all those other areas and relationships that you have. So don't be a damn, but be a channel. And that life of love is love that will conquer. It's, it's a life of faith that conquers the world. So what we talked about last week, some of you, if you were here, the language of scripture is this, we have victory. The word Nike is in Greek. It's we have victory, we are conquerors, we, are, we overcome, we overpower evil. And we overcome the, the lure of, of the world. And we overcome evil. We have victory and we are conquerors in Christ. And so then this is where John comes to. So he ends his letter and he's going to emphasize all these things again and he's going to say it this way. And he comes back to the theme of life. It's just a few verses I'm going to read. I'm going to actually go ahead and jump to, uh, go ahead and go ahead and jump to verse 9. <clears throat> it says this, verse 9, We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. So this is how John ends it. He wraps up his letter. The same way the Gospel of John is ending, First John ends in the same way. I write all of this so that you might have life. And First John is going to say, so that you know that you have it. And my question to you, and I think the question John is asking you and me is this, do you and I have any clue as to what we have in Jesus? Do you and I have any clue as to what we have in Jesus. Jesus is not just an add-on to your life and my life. Jesus is not just a bonus. Jesus isn't just our ticket to heaven. Jesus is life. He's abundant, eternal life. You and I get preoccupied with thinking that eternal life is about heaven. Eternal life is a person. 
It is not something that we have to wait for. It is a reality now. Eternal life, it is in His Son, Jesus. And if you and I have Him, we have life. We have eternal life. And it has already begun. This is the perspective that John wants to remind you and me of. You have life. And I think, I'm like, why is it so important that John needs to remind the church and he needs to remind us today that we have eternal life? Because I think the same tendency that they probably had is the tendency that we have. We think life is found in other things when the whole time it's found in Jesus. So you and I, the allure of the world, is going to constantly tell us life is found here. It's found in things. It's found in experiences. It's found in money. It's found in everything our society tells us to accumulate and get more of. Because then that's when life will be abundant for us. And the whole time Jesus is saying, you don't understand what you have in me. You have the very life of God in you. The very life of God who is light, who is love, is in you. Church, if we have Jesus, and this is how we know we have him, if we believe, if we have faith, if we are trusting, if what we say in the Apostles' Creed is more than just words on a Sunday morning, because we say this every single week, we believe in God the Father Almighty. That doesn't mean we believe He exists. That means we live a life of trust in Him. We believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. We don't just believe that Jesus existed and died on the cross for us. No, we believe in Him. Our faith and our trust, and we live our lives in such a way that, look, I bank my whole life on the fact that Jesus is alive and well, and He is redeeming and restoring me and the whole world. Amen. And my trust is in Him. Right. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. Right. Not just that the Holy Spirit exists, we believe in Him. Our trust is fully and completely in the person of God who's revealed Himself as Father, Son, and Spirit. And John is just reminding you, don't, don't put your trust in other things. If you read the end of John, here's the last thing. First John ends in such a weird way. I didn't read this part, but this is the last thing John says. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Done. Why would he even say that? Because you and I like to construct things in our lives that we think will give us life, and they are empty, and they are void, and they are idols. So when we elevate things in our lives like money and possessions and all those great things that our money can buy, we think life is found there and is not found there. The whole time Jesus is saying, don't you understand what you have in me? Life is found in me. It's found in a vital relationship with me. That is where it is found. I love this verse. This verse, these two verses, 11 and 12, they have special meaning for me because they're, they're the verses that I read at my brother's funeral uh, back in 2004 when Terry passed away. This was a verse that we both memorized in, uh, when I was in eighth grade, he was in ninth grade. And it was the two verses of, of 11 and 12 of chapter 5. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. And we both had the, the nerdy Christian t-shirts. You guys already know this about me. It was lifeguard, lifeguard, <laughs> lifeguard, and then it had the verse, 11 and 12. Because if you have the son, you have life. And my brother Terry, I remember saying at his funeral, I just said, I mean, I started to cry because you already know I cry all the time anyway. And I said this, I said, my brother has Jesus. And right now he's experiencing life in a whole completely different way right now. But the reality is my brother was already experiencing eternal life while he was still living on this earth. My brother had this uh, strange confidence in the Lord. He was kind of known for saying this. Anytime, it was like he said it almost all the time, like, Terry, stop saying that. That's so weird. And he'd say this. He, when he would say bye to someone, and then when he'd say bye to me, I'd go back to college. Terry would say, hey, man, if I don't see you again, I'll see you on the flip side. I'm like, that is so weird. And he would say that, and, and what he was meaning was this, look, if I don't ever see you again until after death, I'll see you again. And I'm not worried about death. I don't, I'm not afraid of it. And I'll see you on the flip side. Because my brother's confidence, it was just a strange, strange confidence in the Lord of, look, 
I have life in Christ right now. And death is simply just the door that gets me to the abundant eternal life to that deeper level. So whether I see you again now or I see you again later, I'll see you again. Because life is found in Jesus Christ. And that's who I am with now and that's who I'm going to be with then. And I love that about my brother. And it annoyed me about my brother too. Don't say that to people. That's weird. That's dark, kind of. But it wasn't. There was a light of Christ that was alive and well in my brother. And so when I read those words, and I was reminded to, my brother has life, and he has it abundantly. It's the eternal life of Christ Jesus. And my hope for you and me today, too, this isn't just about preparing us for death. It's about preparing us for now. You and I, it's so easy for us to live in such a way that we are paralyzed and we are afraid and we fear death. Let me just tell, let me remind you what John says. Perfect love casts out and drives out all fear. You and I have, we don't need to fear death. We don't need to fear, period. Because perfect love, when the love is flowing through us and to us, and when we choose to be a channel and not a dam, we are people filled with love and we are on the overflow all the time. Because that is who God is, and when we have him, we are filled with the very life of Christ Jesus. That's who we are. God is a God of love and life. And he's created us to be people who are lovers, filled with life. So that when people come up and bump up against us, this is how Jesus will say it in John 4, when he's talking to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well. He said, hey, look, I'm going to fill you with living water. So that when the world bumps up to you, you're going to gush out with living water. It's just going to come out of you. Because that is who we are and that's who we are full of. The very eternal life who is Christ Jesus himself. So as we pray this morning, can I remind you as John does? He or she, whoever has the Son, has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I, I, would, I would like to assume that everyone here has the Son. But I don't want to assume that. I can't believe, I can say this. Scripture will tell us this too. John doesn't say this here, but when you read all of Scripture, the Son already has extended His arms out to you. The Son has you already. It's whether or not you want Him back. Do you want Him? Do you want Jesus? Because He wants you. And He loves you. But if today there's not something within your heart that says... I'm confident that Christ is mine. You can leave here today with that kind of assurance that he is yours. That Christ Jesus is yours. And you can leave here knowing beyond the shadow of God, I have eternal life because it is in his son. I can know that. I can know it with confidence. And this is the good news that Jesus offers to you and to me today. And so if God is stirring your heart today, and he hasn't stirred it in a really long time, there's too much of scripture that tells you and me this. Our faith is something we ought to feel. It doesn't mean you have to cry all the time like Pastor Tony. It doesn't mean you have to be super emotional like that. But it's something should stir within you. Something should stir and move within your heart. And that is Jesus Christ, who is the restorer of your life and my life. Yeah. You should feel it. Amen. And if you don't, let me just ask you, do you have the Son? And do you want Him? Because He wants you. Yeah.